Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're starting to get a little touch of fall in the air here in western New York, so I want to start working on my morel beds because I'm going to do some fall morel inoculations. Hopefully do some uh, surface planting with some sawdust blocks. So the first bed I'm going to work on is out here behind my shed. It's on the north side of my shed, so it's mostly shaded. And I already have some just some dirt and sand and some garden lime mixed in because uh, morels do like slightly alkaline soil so I mixed in some garden lime as well and I'm gonna add some more sand here I have another 200 pounds and I have a couple tubs of uh, good compost I'm gonna mix in there as well it's, it's pretty broken down uh, but it's nice and light and fluffy and my secret weapon is here in this garbage bag so I was hiking in the mountains yesterday with a friend we were actually able to find some wild leeks. Uh, the leaves have died back a long time ago, but they have these little dried up flower stalks on them that are still sticking out of the ground. And so that's how we were able to find them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to create like a nice, slightly alkaline, loamy, sandy soil here because that's uh, the kind of environment where I, where I find a lot of my morels. And once I get this bed, all the sand and compost mixed up in the bed here, I'm gonna go ahead and plant our leek bulbs. And uh, eventually, when I have my sawdust blocks ready, I'll be planting them on the surface and I'll figure out something for shade. I may just be using leaves and uh, covering the whole bed with leaves. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We definitely want to get some cover on there. Now these wild leeks or ramps, they will overwinter and then they should start growing next spring. Usually in like April, they'll start popping up leaves. And so I find a lot of morels around patches of wild leeks and growing right in with the wild leeks. So I know they like to chill together. So hopefully uh, this will help out with this bed back here and even if we don't get any morels we'll have a bunch of ramps or leeks that we can cook up and eat so that's the plan um, I'm going to cut these bags of sand open get this mixed in with this compost get everything kind of mixed in and leveled out and uh, then we'll start planting our leeks got our bed all raked out. This is the kind of soil I typically find my morels in. So I'm just trying to recreate that. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good. So now I'm gonna pull my leek bulbs out, get them planted. Uh, we're just actually tomorrow, September 1st. So we have plenty of uh, warm days growing time left for these wild leeks to uh, get their roots down, establish themselves. And I'm hoping October, November, I can get these sawdust blocks on here get some mycelium going into these probably have a couple different strains growing in this bed and uh maybe do a couple blocks on one side one strain a couple blocks on another side let them fight it out should be an interesting experiment it'll definitely be interesting if we actually get some mushrooms we're gonna get planting our leeks before the sun goes down on us and i will give them some water and call it a day Good helper as you are all right all our bulbs are in the ground 
and uh, we actually had quite a few. I didn't count them, but I'd say we had 50 or 60 we put in anyway. Tried to leave them fairly shallow. Uh, typically when you find the leaks in the woods, the bulbs are fairly shallow and they'll grow about anywhere on top of rocks and the cracks of the rocks. So hopefully they'll take in good numbers. Uh, I'm guessing they will. But it's kind of interesting. There's still some uh, seed stalks, flower stalks attached to the bulbs that we planted. Let's see if I can get it to focus there. You can see there's these, uh, there we go, shiny black seeds up top there. So they'll be dropping some seeds in here too and probably getting some plants going this way. So if everything goes according to plan, we should have a pretty good carpet of leeks in here come spring. And uh, hopefully they will give our developing morels some good shade and some companionship as well. So we have them all planted and we're going to call it a night. And I'll jump back in when we have some sawdust blocks ready. Okay, we are back and we are starting to actually assemble our morel bed. The, uh, the leek bulbs we planted seem to be doing well. I checked on a couple and uh, the squirrels have been digging in here doing their fall squirrel thing and uh, they seem to be rooting pretty well the bulbs do so I'm thinking they're liking the soil the sandy soil and we've had a lot of rain lately it's been moist so they seem to be digging it so hopefully we're gonna have a bunch of leeks in the springtime but I actually just planted two morel spawn bags and I'm gonna disassemble one of these uh, to show you guys exactly what I did here and uh, these are from Blue's Best and I was reading some reviews online and some people have had success with the uh, Blue's Best Morel Spawn. So I ordered two bags from them and uh, they just come in small plastic bags. You're going to see those in a minute. They're pretty small bags. It seems to be like composted sawdust and it looks like rye grain. But uh, there's some nice mycelium in there for sure. And what they recommend is just poking a bunch of holes in the bag and surface planting them. So I brought out my official, it's a very official mushroom tool here. I got a uh, broadhead on a f wooden file handle. So that's what I used to stab a bunch of holes in the bags. That worked pretty well. This is what I used to use for stabbing holes in my oyster bags, my oyster columns too. So uh, that's a cool little gadget to make uh, if you're poking holes, doing oyster bags, whatever. I made these uh, wire cages to protect them because as always when you're planting outdoors you gotta worry about critters i got grain here i got a nutritious food source so raccoons possums skunks mice anything are going to be after these so i just uh cut up some of this uh galvanized uh hardware cloth mesh and it's half inch half inch square and i made these little boxes to cover i got a rock on top and I just packed them full of leaves, and I'm going to give these some water, too. But uh, let me pull this off. I got it kind of buried in the, uh, in the ground here. Okay. So this is our Blue's Best Bag, and uh, you can see it's got some nice mycelium growing in there. It looks like rye grain and composted sawdust to me. But I got two of these bags. I got one over here all set up. And this is the other one so what I did is just in one side you poke a bunch of holes and then you just kind of nestle it in on the surface of your bed which I did and I just tucked some of the sandy soil around it and then I filled my basket full of leaves here and just kind of quickly carefully inverted like so it wasn't great I'm going to take these little stakes I made and I'm going to uh, stake this, this wire basket down and I'll sit my rock on top of it and hopefully that'll keep the critters off it. So we're just going to let it ride like this and once I get a bunch of leaves like I mentioned I'm just going to cover this whole bed with, uh, with leaves to uh, give it some cover and hold the moisture. Alright guys we are back. We're finally going to finish up our morel bed for the winter here and just uh, put it to sleep. I finally have a couple other bags made up with a second strain. These are uh, Morkella angusticeps, which is a black morel strain. I actually think it's the same species as uh, 
what uh, Blue's Best is using, our first bags we put down there. I know from the pictures that's a Black Morel strain as well. I'm guessing it's more Kelly and Gusta subs, but I'm not sure. Uh, these two packets I made here, these two bags, are from a strain from Gary at Fresh Fungi slash Fresh from the Farm Fungi. And uh, I got a liquid culture syringe from him and grew out a jar of grain and after that i just uh, mixed it with a little sawdust uh, i use one cup of dry fuel pellets to one cup of boiling water and uh, basically just made a little bit of sawdust and mixed in about half a pound of grain spawn in with that and then i just let it colonize and it's a pretty pretty solid cake right now this is just a regular filter patch bag uh, but once it was fully colonized I just impulse sealed it right above where the cake was. You wouldn't want to leave it this way for a long time. Obviously, since I've removed the filter patch, you could suffocate your mycelium. But I just did this, and I'm going to stab it full of holes, just like I did with our Blue's Best bags. And uh, just lay them on the surface here, kind of nestle them in. This looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did with our other bags. I'm just going to take my little weapon of destruction here and stab these things full of holes. Nestle them in the dirt. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the wire because uh, now i got a fence all the way around this thing. And I'll probably just put a rock on top of them and cover everything with leaves and just let them chill for the winter. Let's take a peek here at uh, our Blue's Best bags. So they're looking a lot different uh, than when we first put them down. They uh, are all white now. You can see some dense uh, brownish mycelium in there as well. So hopefully those are growing into the ground, doing their job there, and hopefully our other bags will uh, will do the same. So on the one side of the bed here, uh, as I mentioned before, we have leeks planted all throughout the bed. On the one side, uh, we're gonna have two Blue's Best bags. On the other side, we're gonna have two of the Morkella Angustisup strain from Gary at Fresh Fungi. And uh, that's gonna be our bed. So we should, uh, you know, this mycelium can travel in the ground quite a ways. Uh, obviously these Blue's Best bags have like a one month head start on these other ones. But uh, we're in middle of November here, so these bags should have a chance to, uh, to do some growing into the ground as well before it gets really cold and everything just kind of uh, freezes up for the winter. I'm just going to flip them over on the back side here and just start stabbing holes in like a checkerboard pattern give them plenty of spots where the mycelium can jump off into the ground I didn't let these incubate a really long time because I didn't want any sclerotia formation in my bags so I'm thinking you want to Use a really nutrient rich substrate in your bag so you have a nice nutrient gradient between your bags and the ground obviously the soil they're growing into isn't going to be nearly as nutrient rich and uh, that way they'll make sclerotia in your bed and uh, not in your bags uh, because the goal is to get the mushrooms to grow out of the bed and the sclerotia are the precursor of mushroom formation so that's the idea all right so i'm thinking we're all set here i nestled the bags into the ground packed some dirt around them just to uh, seal them up a little bit what do you think bud you approve Got everything leafed up. Our new fence will help hold those leaves in there too. So I'll keep you guys updated as things start to happen. If anything happens, so hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think of my bed setup. Let me know if you would have uh, changed anything, done anything differently. I always love discussing that stuff with you guys in comments. And I will catch you next video.